At a quarter past four today, everyone was taken by surprise when news came in that Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung had submitted his resignation to the centre, ending a nearly three and a half year long, eventful and some would say controversial tenure. But the mystery that still remains, what prompted this decision? What was the catalyst and what eventually led him to make up his mind to resign? Delhi's controversial LG stunned with his sudden resignation. After a tumultuous 18-month tenure, Najib Jung says he wants to return to his first love, academics. Jung's two years in office were marred by his constant battle with Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and his Aam Aadmi Party government. From appointment of top bureaucrats to fight for control over Delhi police. Jung and Kejriwal locked horns several times over the period of two years. While Jung thanked the government for its support, his biggest naysayer, Kejriwal, tweeted, saying that he was surprised. Those working with Najib Jung also expressed shock. Blaming Aam Aadmi Party and the centre, Congress claimed that Jung's resignation was a part of a deal between Delhi government and BJP. Has there been any, any deal between Mr. Kejriwal and Mr. Narendra Modi because of which he has been unceremoniously removed? Or is it a plan by the central government to place in an RSS representative at this post of Lieutenant Governor? Najib has quit the capital Jung. But the question remains whether the war between the center and the Aam Aadmi Party will ebb. Bureau Report, India Today. Let's just get you an insight into what happened in the 24 hours actually leading up to Mr. Jung tendering his resignation. Sources have told us that the LG signed files till late last night. It was only today morning that he asked his office to cancel all the appointments that he had. In fact, we also spoke to the Home Secretary who rebutted rumours that the LG had been asked to resign. In fact, the Home Secretary told us that he had a meeting scheduled with Najib Jung. That meeting was to happen tomorrow. So really curious turn of events. What changed? In 24 hours, just a few days ago, that letter you see on your screen right now was shot off by the Lieutenant Governor where he had said that he needs to be on leave from the 25th of this month to the 1st of January. At that time in this letter, there was not even a mention of a resignation, that there was anything on his mind, that he was even contemplating leaving office. Yet, at quarter past four today, Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung dropped that bombshell. In fact, in a while from now, we are going to be joined by my uh, colleague uh, Ankit Tyagi. A uh, surprise turn of events. In fact, the only uh, party which has even spoken about a possible motive to this move is the Congress. Addressing the media, Ajay Makan said that uh, this is a match fixing which has been done between a deal that has been struck between uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Najib Jung. Really curious considering the kind of relationship that the two gentlemen have shared over the last three and a half years that Najib Jung occupied this office. And the story we spoke about right at the top, a day after Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi leveled charges of bribery against the Prime Minister, a verbal duel broke out between the two in his public address in Varanasi. The Prime Minister mocked Rahul Gandhi, said that he's only learning how to speak in public. Rahul's rebuttal was quick and precise. He said, I'd rather you answer my questions than launch personal attacks. <laughs> अभी भाषण सीख रहे हैं ऐसे कब तक हो भी ऐसे कर आप मेरा जितना मजाक उड़ाना चाहते उड़ाओ मगर आप देश के युवाओं का और मेरे सवाल का जवाब दो 
barrage of old allegations. Sarcastic low blows and personal jibes. This is what the demonetization debate has been reduced to. A day after Rahul Gandhi hurled bribery charges against Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister rebutted with taunts from a podium in Varanasi. अपनी डायरी में लिखा है कि हमने नरेंद्र मोदी जी को पैसा दिया है। उनके युवा नेता हैं। जब से उन्होंने बोलना सीखा है और बोलना शुरू किया है, मेरी खुशी का कोई पार नहीं। इंडियन कांग्रेस एस द फाइट गोट पर्सनल Rahul Gandhi accused the Prime Minister of sidestepping allegations. Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi Ji se do teen sawal puche prashtachar ke baare mein unse mene sawal puche sawal ke jawab nahi diye Rahul Gandhi was quick to say that he was unfazed by the mockery. No, we have to put a book on by that. And this is the number of book on Jenna for the day. The son of the governor is a part of the day. The answer he demands are answers to allegations raised by many others before. Allegations that have already been junked by the Supreme Court. He made allegations which were rejected by thrice by court. So where are the allegations? They have been thr thrashed by the court for thrice and now he is claiming something as a new which is a stale story. सच ही किसी बुजुर्गों ने कहा है कि उम्र बढ़ने से अकल नहीं बढ़ती है और पप्पू रह गए पप्पू। The Gandhi scenes allegations surely did not send the Richter scale soaring, but Congress says it has more up its sleeve. But with the fight getting only personal and Rahul's claims just seeming to be empty threats, the debate that was for the Am Janta has been reduced to a mere verbal spat. Bureau Report, India Today. So has Rahul Gandhi managed to get under the Prime Minister's skin? You'll hear more on that ahead on our prime time. But now an India Today APM special report. The Karnataka government is now mulling giving 100% reservation to Kannadigas in all blue-collar jobs in all private sector industries barring the IT and BT industries. Now, these are industries which have secured concessions under the state's industrial policies. It will be imperative for other industries to comply with these rules. If they refuse, the concessions enjoyed by them will be withdrawn by the government. But the question that we are left asking is, what happened to the issue of merit being given precedence? And what can possibly explain the bizarre justification the government is giving for this move? Watch this report. In Karnataka soon, there will be no place for outsiders in blue-collar jobs. What's more, this applies to the private sector. The only exemption given is to the IT and BT sector, the cash cows for the state. This populist and parochial decision is aptly timed, given that state elections are just over a year away. But what is amazing is the justification being given for it. Jobs for their own good. Hardly surprising considering the state labor minister's logic that these jobs are anyway not based on merit but attitude. For a state that sees a huge number of people coming from across the country, especially in the IT sector, here is the worrying news. The exemption granted to them presently may be valid for only five years. 
There is also talk about how leniency will be shown to the 100% rule if there are a total of 70% Kannadigas in blue and white collar jobs. Now the move has prompted demands for other quotas in private jobs too. The amendment will be implemented by the Labour Department once it gets the green signal from the Law Department. But the question remains, what about meritocracy? With Rohini Swami in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, joining us at 8 p.m. now is TV Mohandas Pai. He's the chairman of uh, the board of Manipal Global, also of Aaron Capital. Dr. Nasser Hussain is a spokesperson of the Congress. Dr. Hussain, I want to ask you first, what is the logic behind this? Can you please explain just the logic? I think the logic is very simple. The Minister for Labor, Mr. Santosh Lad, himself has explained it very clearly. What we are looking at is a situation where uh, the political parties, the government, the people of Karnataka have worked very hard and have seen a sort of development which has not been seen in any, any part of the country for the, for the past few decades. But what is happening here is uh, the people of Karnataka uh, who are supposed to get some sort of a benefit, uh, 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 benefit out of the development that has but taken Dr. place Hussain, in Karnataka. But Dr. aren't you being unfair being to the away. large workforce so which comes there, there from was, other so states so, so who, have equally, were, who have equally contributed to the, uh, to, the, to the development of Karnataka? This is really unfair to them. Nene, so I, Karnataka I, I, develops and then Karnatikas get to reap the, the benefits. The last part of the labor, and I think Padmaja, no, no, Padmaja, I think you should understand the large part of the labor force that comes out from outside Karnataka is only because that we have created such kind of an environment and we have created the employment opportunities here in Karnataka. And, and vice versa, this, that, sir. This and vice versa, they are contributing to your like category and blue. Uh, and, and, and blue blue collar jobs. We are not asking for reservation uh, in white collar jobs. Their meritocracy still counts. So, Mr. Here Mohan, that's why then let's labor, just do it like this. Perhaps every state where, is where going will to they go? boundaries and say, no, no, where will they go? we are only for them, going we need, to work we, in our own state. Sort of no one from outside is welcome and we won't go anywhere outside. Is this how our country is going to function now? No, that is wrong. That is wrong. Padmaja, that is wrong. No, that is what you are suggesting. Your interpretation is wrong. You are saying that if Karnataka is developing, then Kannadiga should no, be the benefit. See, I am telling. So and no, where is the, the reservation being job. sought? No, okay, no, where is the reservation being sought? Mr. Pai. No, no, where is the reservation being sought? How, how, no, is it, how is it can being this sought, sought where the merit is counted? possibly be condoned? Padmaja, let me say this. Any industry that goes to a state should make the to make it a policy to hire as many local people as possible. Mm. I think it's a responsibility on every industry that you go to a state, you invest there, you must hire as many local people because you've got to contribute to the local community. The problem in Karnataka, especially in Bangalore, is there is not enough Kannadigas coming up for these jobs. If you look at, let's say, garments. If you look at construction hmm. and if you look at light engineering, there are not enough Kannadigas because the government of Karnataka has not trained them and not invested in them. And if you look at garments, people are coming from, uh, people are going to Orissa, people are going to Jharkhand to get people here. The BBC ran a you know, documentary on that. If you look at construction, people come over from uh, Orissa, they come from Bihar, they come from Rajasthan, they come from West Bengal. And our labor, which is surplus in north of Karnataka, goes to Bombay and Pune. See, if you look at Karnataka, in the south, we don't have large number of unskilled people or semi-skilled people. Mostly are educated, they want office jobs. In north of Karnataka, we have semi-skilled, unskilled people mm. because surplus in agriculture, but they go uh, to Bombay, they go to uh, Pune and other places because it's convenient for them. But Mr. Pai, so there's been a problem the here. to go to so skill I think, these uh, people what the government should to do create is jobs to train for them more people. Rather than arm twist the industries into employing them. Yes, I agree. I agree. Government has to spend... Government has to skill people from North Karnataka, bring them here, mm. give them good accommodation and do all that. But you know, this government has not invested enough in the last three years. Last three years have been an economic washout for Karnataka. We didn't have an industry minister for up to two years. Now a minister has come, he's doing good work, but the efforts will bear fruit only two years from now and, 19, and, and 2018 is the election. So they want to show something that they have done for the first two years of inaction, all the Bagya scheme and giving more subsidies. Mm. So they come up, hit up with this brilliant idea of telling people we are doing this for you i mean you know it's and something then, that should not be done because they must blackmail train people the industries by saying that we are going to jobs. withdraw there concessions that you have been given if you do not adhere to this policy atul anjana the cpi also with us we have the congress spokesperson saying that if 
hundred percent reservation is not given, Mr. Anjan, in blue collar jobs, then these industries are not going to get government concessions. Then should each state function like this? But that is a matter of great concern if the states are thinking. If the whole state started thinking in this manner, what will be the fate of India? And we are not living in, you see, somewhere where you see what sort of problems here. Somebody wants to make this country on the basis of theology, a theological state. Somebody wants to make it. What will happen to constitution? And I think in this country, everybody has a right. Yes, there had, we had a reservation policy. We had a reservation policy backed by the Supreme Court of India. We must adhere to that one. Every state will come with this idea. What will happen to that? You see, in the eyes of the people, in the eyes of the government, in the eyes of the state. Would you like it if tomorrow Kannadigas were denied jobs in other states because other states would have the same policy? I don't want that one. But you are opening a Pandora's box. No, Dr. What? Hussain, Dr. Nasser Hussain of the Congress, would you like to respond to that? What if other states denied jobs to people from your state? Say, a Maharashtra said, Kannadigas cannot come work uh, and do blue-collar jobs in see, our state. See, Yeah, I think Padmaja, you are you are you are confusing. We are we are not we are not asking for hundred percent reservation in hundred percent jobs in the private sector. What we are asking is the people here, the unskilled, uh, the less skilled people here, those who want to do some sort of an a job which is uh, uh, blue collar job or C and D class jobs, they have to be given some sort of an protection. You all you have meritocracy uh, in the technical jobs or the white collar jobs. Uh, everything is based on merit. There everyone can come can come in. There also we have exempted IT and BT uh, from, 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 by, uh, from including in this category. What we are just uh, what we are just hinting at is that the people here in Karnataka have not been provided jo a job. Instead, what the private sector uh, has done in past few no, but uh, that is my in the question. Decade, Why should the state have, give this by kind of protection? The on the, by sidelining the local Mr. people. Pai. They Please have hired. Why shouldn't we give Padmaja. you? Why shouldn't we give? Padmaja, yes. it is a Padmaja, Padmaja. This is a big lie being perpetrated by some people. This is a big lie. I would like the honourable gentleman to give us data, to give us data which industry has not hired local people in Karnataka. Let him give data. Let him tell. Let him tell everybody. So many people have been hired from outside. So many Karnatikas have been denied jobs. Karnatikas have not been denied jobs. If industry has hired from outside, it's because there are no Karnatikas here. He must understand that. He must not perpetuate the lie that outsiders have come and taken away jobs. Where are the Kanadigas first? Let him talk to industry. Let him find out. Let him give data. Government doesn't have any data. Can I, can I, Without data, the can, government is trying to perpetuate here? this lie that local no, people are not getting jobs. It's totally wrong. Yes, Dr. Hussain, give, give us the data. Padmaja, please can give us data. Here, Tell please. us how many jobs, can in which here. industry, which industry and what. Yeah, yeah. See, the, see, Mr. Mohandas Pai. No, no, Mr. And then Mr. Mohandas Pai has this habit of just speaking against the government. Anything and any, uh, anything and everything he wants to speak about the government, he has been doing that. Uh, has he gone and seen those parts the of Balaji please district give us data. and Chitradurga district? Please give us data. No, no, please, no, please allow me to speak. Mr. Mohandas Pai, please allow me to speak. No, no, you please allow me to speak. See, have you gone to those parts of the uh, Karnataka yes. where all these ponds and plants and please, steel please plants have us. come up? Have you seen wh wh what kind of labor force is there? Have you seen the kind of cheap yes, labor that has been brought, brought in from Varisa, West Bengal, and Bihar? Bihar. No, 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 then, 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 then what are you talking? Have you had? See, I am, I am not. Contest, see, I am not contesting the point that please ask the, the Karna, please ask the industry why they are from Bihar. They are telling you local people are not coming. Right from, right from trader to transporter to driver, they are not, not coming. Please ask has them. Been brought up from West Bengal, from the Bihar, from Jharkhand, just because they accept the cheap. Cheap wages that these industries are giving. They, they, they're, they're actually the people. Those have been brought up from the northeast, no, north, uh, eastern part of our country. Or maybe, Doctor Hussain, the given locally given available wages. labor no, is not skilled kind of enough. Been given. Doesn't an industrialist have the right to choose whether he has the skilled labor and who to employ? Why can't he pick? Do you have the data? How can you enforce it? Do you have the data? Nani, Do you have the data? Job. You've made this broad Nani. stroke allegation that <laughs> everyone from the, Bihar and West Bengal is, being, the data, is being employed see, only because they are cheap. Do you have the cheap. data, Mr. Mohandas Pai sir, has the data? Sir, do you have the data to show that labor is cheap labor? from Bengal and West, uh, West Bengal and Bihar, which is why they are being employed? Maybe they are better skilled. Have you been the, able to provide skilled labor? Have you been able to create the jobs? 
Instead the of the existing has jobs, government has definitely being randomly yeah. taken away and, yeah. and, and industries being told you will have to give it to locals. So let me ask you another question, Dr. Nasser Hussain. See, How do you expect enterprise to flourish yeah. in your state Every if you are going to impose these random ad hoc rules? If there is going to be no free enterprise, how will investment come? Let me ask you that. I think the I think the government of Karnataka is uh, giving enough incentives, even uh, uh, and they have given all kinds of rebates, all kinds of facilities to the uh, MNCs. That is why we have lots of attraction for these kind of investment in our state. Everyone knows that. And that exactly the, the kind of rebates you say you are going to withdraw. Mohan Daspai, I'll give you the last and that word. Is also, and, and elections that is are also going to the, happen. And that is also the reason. That is also the reason. <laughs> then that is also the reason why people from different parts of the country are attracted towards Karnataka. If there had been no employment, Mohan there would have been no people coming from different parts of the Mohan country. Mohan Daspai. That is a, that that itself is a proof why people are coming Padmaja, to our, uh, to Padmaja, our state. Padmaja, industry, Padmaja. Industry has an obligation to employ local people. That is a given. That is not under debate. Mm. So I don't like the Congress judge gentleman accusing me of something. I have always said industry should employ local people. Government has to train the local people. Now he says in Bellary you got people. Yes, people from outside have come. But they're all being paid the wages dictated by law. If they're underpaid, government should put them in jail. What action has government taken to go and see whether they're being paid proper wages? They accuse those people of taking money in cash. Mm. Let government enforce the law. The law is very clear. Here. Now they must talk to the industry and ask them why is there so much labor coming from outside? Is there a problem with getting labor from inside? And if Absolutely, they say yes, because it's just that much easier. Local so perhaps it's just that much easier instead of creating jobs to say that these jobs will have to be given to the locals and this populist measure will get them some brownie points. It's an easier thing to do rather than the long, long haul measures. Completely out of time. Thank you very much, Dr. Hussain and TV Mohandas Pai for joining us on 8 p.m. We are going to follow up on this story and really see if the government of Karnataka manages to push this measure through. Out of time on 8 p.m. See you at the same time tomorrow.